All right, Nathan Butnet, episode 20. There are officially more episodes of Nathan Butnet now than years I am alive. So, I am joined here by CJ Hoop Talks, amazing guest. He has been on here a few times. We were going to have a, another person, but they canceled on us last minute. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> CJ's over here being like, yeah, and his reason was cap, too. Yeah. There, uh, but there was this guy, and I'll just, I won't say his name just in case, but there's this guy in a group chat me and CJ are in. And he had some really, really, really hot takes that I wrote down for today. And I told him, I said, come on the podcast and defend your takes, bro, because these are some hot fucking takes. And he said yes, and then last minute he said he had something come up. So he is not here. And so me and CJ are kind of, I'll be honest, just kind of figuring out what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so I said that I, I told him we could go through some of the hot takes that we still had written down. Um, it's not going to be the same, obviously, because it's we don't have the originator of these hot takes here. Um, yeah, but um, it, it, it still gives us uh, at least something to talk about. So it's not sw- like big, massive amounts of silence. So mm-hmm. we can yeah. give we can give our perspective on these hot takes, even though the guy that came up with the hot take isn't here to def- defend himself. That said, these whack stuff. So, oh, and before I forget, yeah. I almost forgot. I'm sorry, CJ. Um, so. As you can see up at the top here, we got the follower goal because these are streamed live on Twitch. So go follow the Twitch if you haven't already. We are on 36. We're trying to hit 50 by the end of the year. So twitch.tv slash easy uh, It's in the description on YouTube. And then, of course, if y'all are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anything on audio, then these are available on YouTube with the video. So go check those out. That's Jinji with three Ys. So G I N G E Y Y Y. And then the um, podcast also available, obviously in audio versions on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. And there's also the Instagram, Twitter. I know I'm like plugging everything right now, but you know it's it's what you got to do sometimes. So TikTok, Twitter. If you look up Nathan Butnet or Jinji. Uh, you should be able to find it. If you're watching the YouTube video, they're all in the description, and they're all also on the screen here. As well as uh, CJ's uh, CJ's socials, all of his socials, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube are on the screen here, or if you're listening to the audio, it is just CJ Hoop Talks on all three platforms, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. So definitely go follow him. He's got uh, He's got more subscribers and more followers than me on everything. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's a really cool guy. And he changed his oh. logo recently on Instagram, which I wanted to bring up. He changed like he changed it to, like, this red background with, like, a ye- yellow text. So it looks like a fucking Soviet, like, flag with Kawhi on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, hey, can I explain it real quick? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, so if you look at Dragon Ball Z, right, literally... If you see dragon, the dragon in Dragon Ball, I think it's yellow, and the red is like Ball Z, right? Yeah. Oh, I used that. Got LeBron. At the time, I wasn't thinking it, but when somebody said it to me, they was like, it, "The C does it represent like China or something?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I might have to change it to all red without the yellow. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so you just thought I'm gonna have no, but you know, it's LeBron James. I had a poll on my Instagram. I said that to my group chat, and my group chat said Red One was better than the original. So I'm like, okay, let me just do it then, you know? Yeah, I was in the minority somehow. I thought the orange went hard, and then everybody in the group chat was like, oh, the red one's awesome. And I'm like, I guess I'm outvoted then. Yeah, you know, you know, the second highest one was the Kobe one. Oh really? Yeah, that that's something that somebody in the group chat said we should talk about. So, again, we have like some topics written down, but um, I also asked the group chat for some topics since like last minute we had a guy cancel. Um, so 
G underscore Ray in the uh, in the group chat. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Um, you probably know because you you're the one who added him. But um, he said uh, he said talk about Kobe since his death anniversary was three days ago and how he influenced the NBA in the entire game of basketball. Oh, that's a big big question. Oh, but, that's the, yeah, that's the question that you're really gonna have to do research on, and that's, you know, if I if I'm being vague, something the upcoming superstars they looked up to Kobe. Yeah, so that's the nice thing I could say. That's... Yeah, like what I would say is, Kobe, and people are gonna hate what I'm about to say, but. Let let me explain it. Let me explain it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say Kobe was sort of the first Curry in terms of changing the game. And the people are going to be like, oh, my God, you're comparing Curry to Kobe. What I mean by that is he helped shift the game from a uh, more importance on offense is what I mean. Obviously, Curry and Kobe, in my opinion, two completely different, like, Two completely different eras, obviously. Two completely different leagues. But what I mean is that Kobe, you know, obviously has a lot of these scoring records dropping, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 81 fucking points. And uh, when Curry was drafted into the league, Curry, you know, obviously known for his three, three ball, especially now breaking the record. So... When Curry was drafted and was dropping threes, you saw a complete shift in how the game was playing, how the game was played, um, and everybody was just all the scouts, all the front offices were basically pushing and rushing to get players that could score efficiently and could be playmakers rather than key defenders and it we sort of saw this shift in the league which i've brought up multiple times in my videos uh with the offensive rating of the league um shift into a more offensive important game and i feel like before curry kobe was sort of the first one to do that because again you know kobe is known for his three as well you know kobe can shoot can shoot it from anywhere on the floor as well and he's dropping 80 point games yeah and obviously we got to talk about mamba mentality so you know just the way he influenced again uh players of even now um this uh like kobe i know is is recent like uh he's a recent player he's not like magic or anybody but it's still been about a decade and so to have players even now that are being drafted now at like 18, 19, my age yeah. being like, Oh yeah. Kobe influenced me when to be honest, I'm 19. I didn't see that much of Kobe because he was like early, like two thousands ish, like late two thousands. And so, yeah. you know, I was born in 2002. So if it was like 2008, I would have only been six at the time, but you got yeah. players that are being drafted right now that are like, yeah, I still looked up to Kobe and then back when Kobe was still playing, obviously, you had uh, you have all these players. Um, Shaq, who obviously played with Kobe, and um, you got players. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones, but ju- just everybody was like, you know, um, Kobe showed you his determination and everything. Um, you know, the mama mentality, uh, just never getting up, giving up, putting in the work. Uh, made players care more about their game and how with how they're going to deal with Kobe and how much work they need to put in and practice and everything like that. Um, It's sort of like, again, another weird comparison, but uh, we can go to like Ron Artest when he joined the the Pacers. If you watch that documentary of Malice at the Palace, when Ron Artest, uh, when Ron Artest joined the Pacers, um, you know, he was giving 110% even in practice. And Reggie Miller and Jermaine O'Neal in the Netflix documentary said, I don't think we've ever practiced as hard as we did uh, when Ron Artest joined our team. Ron Artest was pushing all of us. And Kobe did that on, like, you know, 10 times the level. 
So I don't really know what else to say besides that. I know I've kind of been going for a little while. But uh, that's I don't know what else to say about Kobe because, again, that's sort of a big topic. And it, yeah. the guys in the group chat just kind of sprung that on us. But it's a good conversation to have, you know, how did Kobe change the league? You know, and he's he's always going to be remembered. And, um, yeah, he definitely was taken away from us too early, especially his daughter, too. Because yeah. not, not to get into, like, the whole, like, politics of it, you know, like NBA versus WNBA. But I really yeah. feel like, you know. Yeah, she would have took over. I was going to I was going to say like um she literally was like the young female Kobe and I feel like if she would have gone into like the WNBA she definitely would have popularized the WNBA even more yeah. and maybe propelled it I don't know to the level of the NBA but I fuck it I'll say it maybe to the the level of the NBA because again she is the, f the she was the young female Kobe um, Sims, they would definitely just like you know just um yeah watch her Even exactly if they don't like it they would watch it just just for Kobe you know what I'm saying exactly and it's like it definitely would have helped the NBA or not the NBA the WNBA get uh get a massive boost and it definitely would have been been fun to see the WNBA sort of increase in that in that popularity with um with with her playing so yeah. um. But unfortunately, we're not. We're not we're gonna be able to see that. Yeah, that's, so that's just the biggest what if, huh? Um, yeah. I got a question. So, uh, where do you rank Kobe all time? Fuck, bro! You can't just randomly ask me that. <laughs> hey, I already look. I'm gonna talk about it. I'm, I'm must. Talk. I'm gonna say top ten, but I don't know where in the top ten. You're I'll say gonna that. Hate me. You're gonna hate me. What's up? I'm Look, Kobe, he barely hits my top ten, bro. Barely. Okay, who who else do you got? Do you, was it you or was it another guest that we did that we ranked people with? I think it was with you. It was another guy. It was another. Guy. Are you sure? I think yeah. me and you went through like, I think no, me I and you went I through like. Never tell it. Look, me for me, right? Yeah. Look, Shaq. People say Tim Duncan and Kobe is close. No, no. no. Me, Tim Duncan, you already know. You know how I feel about Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, he's he, he near the top five for me. Right? Both of us are Spurs fans. We're we're gonna get into like pop oh, yeah, and stuff bro. later, but we're both biased towards the Spurs. Yeah, I know I'm biased, <laughs> but it's just look, I'm not trying to hate on Kobe. Yeah, bro. But he just lacking the accolades. You know, and um it's really between him, um Akeem forgot the other person but it's like another big right and they're fighting for that um you know that 10th spot for me like kobe for me kobe the only reason why he's down there is because he don't have the achievements and people say he got robbed and everything but no that's that's just a narrative at the end of the day right you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and i don't want to be like looking like a hater or nothing but, uh who you think is the greatest laker of all time Damn, bro, that's another big question. Cause the problem is, like, probably four out of the top ten are Lakers. You know, right. you you got Kareem, you got Magic, you got Kobe. You know, so. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm just saying. Who? Uh, who man, probably been? Magic though. It might yeah. be Magic. Okay. So. Kareem's ah uh, oh, fuck. Now it's between. Cause magic, magic versus Kareem is a whole other debate as well. <laughs> that, that is a debate, but guess what? People, right? Yeah, all right. The only reason I have Kareem over Magic, cause you know during his Bucks days, you know what I'm saying? His yeah. Bucks days, he was a, he was a demonic monster. You know what I'm saying, right? So, the only reason I'm bringing this up, right? And it's because the inconsistency of people when it comes to ranking players. Okay. Um, usually they will say Kobe is the greatest Laker of all time, right? Mm hmm And then when you think about it, Matt Johnson, he played his whole career with the Lakers. Same as Kobe. But they won't rank Kobe ahead of Magic on an all-time... Like, that don't make any sense. Like, at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you could say he's iconic. It's just what they did for the franchise. For me, I think Magic did more to the franchise more than Kobe. I would say 
so the way I word this is important. So people listening, y'all are going to have to catch the wording. I think Kobe did more for the Lakers. Magic did more for the league, if that makes sense. Yeah, he did. Because Magic and Larry Bird literally saved the fucking NBA. And I feel like Kobe basically... Oh, I'm getting some echo on your end. I don't know what that's from. uh, Let me just turn this down. All right. Is it better now? Uh, test, test. Yeah, I think it's good. Um... I, cause I think Kobe sort of did the same thing for the Lakers and this could be a bad take, but, um, I, with the league magic and Larry bird again, saved the league. And I feel like the Lakers were sort of in like this, uh, the Lakers sort of had this hiatus of like decent players. I, that's mm-hmm. that's probably the wrong way to say this, but that's probably the wrong way to say that. But I mean, like, if you look at their championships, there's sort of like this break, you know, between Magic yeah. and Kobe. Um, and so I feel like Kobe sort of revived like the Lakers dynasty and everything like that. The way that Magic revived the I see your eyes again. I know this may be like kind of a hot take, but I feel like Kobe brought attention back to the Lakers is what I'm trying to say. After, like, okay. Magic was right, out of Nate, there. Nate, 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 I got to stop you right there. Okay. Look. I know he's so humble. And he praised Kobe like it's the end of his life. Because that's the best friend. Y'all know Shaq saved the Lakers. Yeah. Kobe, he continued what Shaq brought to the team. Yeah, but again, I feel like Kobe boosted the ratings even more than Shaq did of course of course of course because Kobe you know slam dunk contest champion and everything but yeah so I'm feeling like I'm saying like I feel like Kobe brought a lot of attention to the Lakers that was sort of uh, the Lakers have always been the most popular team on the NBA so I know how this sounds but again it was sort of like the Lakers weren't at the level that they were the years before and the years uh the the years before and the years after Kobe were not the same. Well, okay, how about this, right? But Shaq I think Shaq came to the Lakers when Kobe was like a rookie or whatever, right? Or no, they drafted Kobe as soon as Shaq came to the Lakers, right? I think let me check. I'm going to use Siri so y'all going to hear this. Because I can't switch windows to look it up on Chrome. I think. When did Shaq join the Lakers? The Lakers met the Hornets yesterday. That's not what I meant, Siri. God damn it. Hang on. <laughs> I looked up when did Shaq join the Lakers, and she gives me the Lakers score for last night. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to talk about rest. Yeah, bro. Well, let's finish this, like, Kobe talk real quick. Mm hmm. When did Shaq join the Lakers? He played for the Lakers in 1996, and then when did Kobe get drafted? drafted? Wait, wait, was it no, Kobe got drafted 96. in 96 as well, so they both yeah, joined yeah, the Lakers 96. at the same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that legendary draft with like Steve Nash and everything. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, st- Kobe, fucking Allen Iverson. Fucking all them drafted 96, bro. <laughs> yeah, let's so, go. Look. Shaq already was a star in Orlando. Clearly, you can look it up back then. Because remember, he was, he was like one of the rookies that went yeah. on. That brings me up to another hot take that I'll bring up later when you're done saying look. this. Shaq was a star. He had the power. I don't even think when Shaq got there, Kobe was starting, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People back then, they went for Shaq, right? I will say this, right? Kobe did boost their ratings up, but it's not as as a big difference as you're making it seem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. Um, I say when Shaq got there, they was like right here, right? Yeah. And when Kobe started getting good, it was like this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get I, mean, I, 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 I get you, I get you, I get you. 
Um, I was gonna bring up. Uh, I got two things, and I don't know yeah. which one you want to hit on first. So. Um. So. We were talking about magic earlier and stuff. I feel like the NBA have sort of had a um, face of the league like every year when somebody's retired. Because again, like magic, magic like sort of saved the league. And then after magic, it was MJ. And then after MJ, it was LeBron. So now the question is after LeBron, who's it going to be now? Who's going to be the new face of the league when LeBron retires? I would say after MJ, it was Kobe, then it was Braun. Well, yeah. But you know what I mean. Like, after each, like, retirement, there's been yeah. sort of like, okay, that's the next great. Yeah. So I'm now, four years, is, it, sure. is it is it going to be Giannis or no? I don't know. Because I right feel now. like it's the national basketball. I was watching a video, and it was a, like, yeah. a really well-made video. And they were debating who's going to be the face of the league. And... You know, everybody immediately jumped to Giannis, but the guy in the video was saying, like, well, the problem with Giannis is that he's an international player, and it's it's called the National Basketball Association, so they feel like the NBA, in terms of media, um, yeah. will, will try and push more of an American player in, like, in like their news cycle, like ESPN and Sports Center and everything. They're going to try and push more of an American player. Yeah. Cause um, cause like Luca's international, Gian- Giannis is international, and this sort of goes into like the NBA expansion talk, which we'll bring up later. But like a lot of these players are international now, so it brings up the question: Who's going to be the face of the league? Because you know every, um, because again, I they're gonna try and I feel like they're gonna try and pick an American player and like push him rather than. Giannis or Luca, especially because they were already slandering Giannis before before he won a championship anyway. So yeah. it would kind of seem like I feel like a lot of people would call them out on that cuz they're already calling they're already getting called out for it now after Giannis won the championship how how wrong they were. But I feel like they'd obviously get called out even more if they're like, "Ah, oh, this Giannis kid sucks." You know, yep. and then like a few years later, they're like, "Fuck, LeBron retired. What do we do?" Ah, oh, Giannis is the new goat. Um, you know, just panicking, and yeah. yeah. So I don't know who the next face of the league is gonna be. Um, as of right now, I would say it's definitely gonna have to be. Uh, it's either they're gonna have to try to push that Lamelo Ball agenda, Zion. Um, who's another one? Or Anthony Edwards, you know what I'm saying? One of those, because they do, they do favor a lot of American players more than, um, international. I could see, I could see them pushing sort of an, an Ant versus LaMelo rivalry thing, sort of like Magic yeah. and, so, so again, sort of like Magic and Larry Bird. I could see them doing like a LaMelo versus Ant thing, or... Oh, John ja Morant. Ooh, John Morant's a good one, cause yeah. I was I was about to bring up what if they do a mix of USA and international, and and it's again like a rivalry, and it's and instead of having an American face, they have an American and international face, and they do yeah. like John ja Morant versus Luca or Trey versus Luca, cause Trey versus Luca, um, they don't really have a rivalry with like in real life. But in the media, they do just because they were traded for each other in the draft. In real life, they love each other. But yeah, for real. so it, it might be hard for them to do Luca versus Trey, just because yeah. like they're best friends in real life, um, and so they won't have as much like heat as like Magic and Larry, because like Magic and Larry like actually beefed like in real life until they got older, and now like they're sort of chill with each other, like you saw in the NBA seventy five commercial, which again may be just for TV, but still um they're more chill now than they were back then point being um trey and luca are like friends sort of now um and so they might go john luca instead but um yeah we'll just have to see i i I could definitely see you're right i could definitely see Lamelo versus ant or jaw versus luca so or evan mobley you don't know he might (laughs) People actually compare him to Tim Duncan, so. Bro, that 
that's another thing I was going to bring up later. So, uh, but before I do, I was going to hop on one of the things you brought up. Again, I said I had two things after yeah. the Kobe talk. So, you brought up Shaq uh, Orlando. One of the hot takes I have written down from our friend that is not joining us today. Um, he said that Orlando Shaq was better than Lakers Shaq. <laughs> oh no! Like, oh, <laughs> I will say defensively because he was more mobile, but yeah, offensive? No, no, no. That I mean, Orlando Shaq, he wasn't. People really underestimate like how good was he? Because mm-hmm. he's actually. I'll say that was his peak athleticism, you know? Yeah. All right, here's a good question for you. Oh, sorry. I thought yeah. you were done. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so this is a question my dad asks me, like, all the time. Because my dad is the one who got me into basketball. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. And he asks me this question probably once every six months. Because he knows I run a basketball podcast now. And he likes me yeah. bringing this up. He asks me all the time, where would... Shaq be without Kobe and where would Kobe be without Shaq so we just brought up how Lakers Shaq was better offensively but what if what if Kobe wasn't assisting him what if Kobe wasn't passing him passing it to him and wasn't the playmaker how would Shaq Laker how, how would Lakers Shaq line up with Orlando Shaq if Kobe wasn't passing the ball I will say that and um it wouldn't have so many chips. I would say, at most, they would get two. But one, that one with um, when Shaq won MVP, he almost had a unanimous MVP. Mm-hmm. He definitely was gonna um, you know, dominate that year. But um, because they had like Glenn Rice, they had uh, oh, I just can't name the players right now. But you know what I'm saying? They, they yeah. had a uh, great supporting cast, but uh. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say they want to win those two because Kobe did actually help him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah. So we can take this sort of Lakers talk into uh, Westbrook talk if you want. Oh yeah, let's go. I mean, where do we start? He um, he had like a really good game the other night against the Hornets, but that's because LeBron wasn't playing and AD was coming off an injury. So, I mean, again, Westbrook is a monster whenever he plays by himself, but it's when he plays with LeBron and AD. Yeah. uh, I'm going to die by this statement. Um, Because really, to be honest, AD is holding them back. AD... I must even though Russ, he yeah he's he shoots inefficiently. No, AD's holding, and the only reason AD's holding him back is because he's always injured. You have seen LeBron can come back, drop thirty whenever he feels like it. You know what I'm saying? If his shots are hitting, he's gonna he's gonna still take them shots even though he's supposed to be a pass first, right? Mm-hmm. The thing is, they don't have that consistent shooters around them that you know LeBron can just like facilitate and take less shots. He has to take more shots. So I'm thinking, I'm saying, right, I say if LeBron, if AD gets healthy and if LeBron, you know, eats a sense of being, you know what I'm saying, um, make Russ come off, come off the bench, you know? Yeah. Can I say, like, a really hot take that I have planned for a video? I'm going to have to walk out the room after saying this because I'm going to have I'm gonna have red dots on me after saying this shit. What are you about to say? All right, ready? You're going to have to fucking... I'm legit going to have to walk out the room after this, and you're going to have to fucking right, <laughs> say right, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every player that plays with their... Bo- ah, fuck. Every player that plays with LeBron, ah fuck, I'm stuttering because I'm like I'm so so bad saying. Every player that plays with LeBron plays worse with him. Playing with LeBron James is a curse. 
All right, I gotta no. go. <laughs> no, no, it's not true. No, no, no. Come back, come back here, bro. Come back here, bro. Come back here. Oh, bro. I went and I grabbed a drink. I was like, <laughs> oh, bro. I have no idea what you said while I was gone, but. Playing with LeBron James is a fucking curse, bro. At, look at every single player that's played with LeBron. Every single player that play, every single player that has played with LeBron has their worst season with him. Kyle, Ky, Kyrie Irving, Dwayne Wade, Jay Crowder. It was good. What? Yes, but look at their. I'm saying look at their stats. All of their stats well, dropped when with LeBron. What do be se second sc in scoring? No, but I'm saying, okay, what I'm going to bring, one of the things I'm going to bring up with the, in the video is I talked about previously the pressure of big markets, right? Like, that's the small market effect, which I've brought up before. Players feel, players feel less pressure playing in a smaller market, obviously, because there's not that many fan eyes on them and everything, and... Even even if you're playing professional basketball, pressure gets to everybody. You know, if you feel too much like stress on you, you're gonna underperform. Yeah, for sure. And so now we take that that idea of pressure of large markets, and we put it on one player. Playing with LeBron James has that same sort of pressure, if not more, and it's. Oh because you know he's the he's the face of the league we were just talking about you know lebron is like the most popular player it's like if yeah. you if you fuck up with lebron your career is practically done and that's happening with westbrook right now okay westbrook is Whoa. under westbrook is underperforming and lebron is going like he Westbrook's reputation, especially because he's playing with LeBron and he's playing with the Lakers, who the Lakers are a big market team, and we just talked about the pressure of big market. All the fans, as soon as Westbrook fucks up, there's a million Instagram posts about it. And so now, if Westbrook leaves the Lakers, he's going to have to deal with the scraps and see what teams will still take him with what reputation he still has left because his reputation is, like, fucked right now because he's playing with LeBron and the Lakers. Wait, is that yours or is that mine? Was what? That beeping noise. I didn't hear a beeping noise. I hope it didn't show up in the recording. Oh, that's definitely mine. I don't know. There's something going on. Okay, but did you catch everything I said? Yeah, yeah. Um. I feel like playing with LeBron James is a curse, bro, because it's like it's just so much pressure on you, and it's like if you fuck up, you're getting traded somewhere. And you have to build back up your reputation because it has just been sunk down to such a level when if if you underperform with LeBron. You know what I mean? Because everybody's going to listen to LeBron. And if LeBron's like your shit, then you're just deemed shit across the entire league. And you have to prove yourself otherwise, which is what Kyle Kuzma has done. And I, I was talking to a friend. Again, I, I know I'm going for a while. I want to get you to talk. But... I was talking to my friend the other day, and my friend was like, I can't believe I'm saying these words, but Kyle Kuzma is balling. And it's because he's not with LeBron. He he had such a bad reputation with LeBron because, he again, he's playing for the Lakers, where if you fuck up on the Lakers, there's millions and millions of posts about it, and your reputation is just gone. And so he goes to a small market team with the Wizards, and he's scoring, you know, 20, 30 points a game. Uh, CJ's shaking his head. Uh, I, <laughs> I can't believe what you're saying. Look, okay, first thing with that Kyle Kuzma thing. We're, we're seeing this now. It's hard being the third scoring option with AD and LeBron on the floor. Okay, we see this with Russ. We see this with Kyle Kuzma. We see this with KCP. Okay, we can't. We all right. I need you to destroy that that whole LeBron make his his team worse. Okay, that's that's just something I just can't agree with. Okay, look. 
I'm not saying he makes the team worse. I'm not saying he makes the team worse because obviously he's getting wins. I'm saying he makes players individually worse. I will say, look, I will say it's hard being third fiddle. But even if you're third fiddle, that doesn't give you an excuse to go like 0 for 20 or whatever the fuck. It's because of the added pressure, and then whenever you have that added pressure, people are going to meme the fuck out of you. Westbrook's getting memed right now. Kuzma was getting memed last year. That's what I'm saying. Like, in this new... Yeah, social media in the NBA right now is like... When you start when you third scoring, you don't... You don't have the option of taking it into the paint and, you know... Unless, like, you're a center or something. That's what, all right. Third option, right? Third option scoring. I'll say, you know how the Suns are. Mm hmm. You see, you can say D Book is the first scoring option, right? Then, you know, obviously, Chris Paul, he has a ball in his hands. Mm hmm. Then you have DeAndre Dayton. Yeah. Right? And DeAndre Dayton, you, you see, the, the shots he takes is so limited because he only takes inside shots, most of them. So. Thing is with the third scoring option with LeBron, because we seen this with uh. At one point it was Ilgowskis, but before that Ilgowskis he used to be the uh, second scoring option. Um, what's another one? Uh, Chris Bosh, Kevin Love. Okay. We remember when LeBron and Kyrie and Kevin Lo- Kevin Love was underperforming. You know why? Cause he's playing with LeBron. I wouldn't say that. I will say he had to adapt his game to play with those two scoring options. And that was this is being a spot up shooter. And being a spot up is hard if you're not used to spotting up. Can't I love I'm not disagreeing with you. I know that I I'm saying I know the reason why they're underperforming. But yeah. I'm saying the NBA like media nba fans people that are just casual watchers aren't gonna dive deep into it as as much as me and you are they're just gonna go oh this player's performing shit and then they're just done because they're looking at the stat line and they're being like oh this person's bad me and you know what's going like me and you that research it know okay russ kevin love kuzma you know whoever is underperforming be you know for these reasons but the casual fan isn't going to look at that they're just going to be like oh russell westbrook is shit now which is what's going on and i'm you know i'm saying that's because he has all this all these cameras on him now because lebron also has the cameras on him and so by playing with lebron there's all this attention that's now immediately on you and if you fuck up everybody's gonna know that's what i'm trying to say okay look 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 i will say right you're not wrong about the LeBron thing, right? Because, yeah, playing with LeBron, you do have to play like a in a t- like a official standard. You know what I'm saying? If you can hit at least two of your shots, yeah, you'll be good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, um, see about that, right? The thing is, uh, they're on the Lakers. <laughs> that- and you can't look. Even Lakers fans will agree with me if you ever, like, you know, talk to a Lakers fan. At one point, they used to hate on Kobe, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I mean... I don't know if was... you can see that, YouTube watchers, but my, my cat's going crazy. Sorry, CJ. I just... If people are wondering what the noise is or what what's moving over here, that's that's I, Manu. I, so, I, I made a video about Manu a while back, so... Oh, you named but, him Manu? Yeah, bro. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but anyway, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Just he's Ooh, fucking with his uh, he's fucking with his right. food bowl right now. <laughs> oh, it's cool. It's cool. So I was saying, right? Lakers fans, well, if you're playing for the biggest market, right? Lakers or Knicks, you're you're obviously gonna have the cameras on you. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gonna have the because they're so easily market. Everybody gonna have their own um camera on you, right? Mm-hmm. Lakers, yeah, they fell off like a few years ago. It's because they didn't have any star talent or anything. You can tell, you can say that with like Danny Green. You know, when Danny Green missed that shot, remember he was receiving death threats. 
Mm -hmm. So I can't say it was LeBron per se that's like literally, you know, making the camera like on on them. I would say the Lakers, like the Lakers and social media. I think it's a mix of both. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, because even if like it's on the Cavs, the Cavs weren't a big market team except when LeBron was there. And Lakers already have a big market team. So if Westbrook became a Laker even without LeBron, you would have that issue of more media attention. Then you have, you're playing with LeBron and you're a Laker. So it's like, you're just going to have so many cameras on you that whenever you fuck up like you ha- like Westbrook has been, it's going to be everywhere. Also, thing is, social media, they protect who they want to protect. Yeah. And I was gonna, I was gonna, that goes into my, my, my next thing. So we can kind of combine these topics. Uh, we were going to talk about Zaza, Grayson Allen, and then refs in general. So where do we want to start on that? Oh, wait, hold on. Before I go on, uh, I was going to say Curry, he was having like his big shooting slumps, right? Yeah. Nobody posted about it. What do you mean nobody posted about it? Curry, sh- Curry shooting bad was everywhere uh, for like the past like two weeks. Was it was it on Bleacher Report? Was it on Sidelines of Resources? Was it on? Yes, bro. Uh, CJ. Oh, right? c- no, they don't. They yes. Don't post out low lights. No, it was not posting it, bro. How's the highlights? CJ, now you're the one with the bad take. Fucking the Curry shooting bad was everywhere. I did not see it. <laughs> Look, I see it on Twitter. I've seen it on NBA meme pages. I'm talking about the big social media uh, sources. It was on fuck. It was on bleach. It was on Bleacher Report. It was on House of Highlights. It was on it was buckets. No, no, yes, it was. It was. No, it I can no, guarantee it was. you, it was. I will not see. I was. I was hawking their page now. Hawking. All right. Loo- I, oh. How about how about this? I'm gonna bring up another topic. And we can t- you, me and you can talk about that other topic while I scroll down House of Highlights. And if I find a post about, and if I find a post about Curry, I'm gonna fucking bring it up. Go ahead, cause it was tour dates, tour dates. Literally, I never seen Curry shoot so badly. That's what I'm saying. It was no one, no one talks about it. You know I why? can guarantee you, I can find a post He's about the it. Most overprotected star in the league. No, LeBron is the most overprotected star. Come on now. Come on. Okay, at a certain point, yes. It won't they they're not gonna have LeBron slender. Okay. Alright. Hey, let scrolling. me let me bring up let me bring up another topic while I'm looking for this. So it's not just silence. So uh, we okay. We can go to the one that I was talking about. We were just talking about social media. We we're still technically talking about social media and stuff right now. Uh, I wanted to bring up the uh, the refs and everything. Um, like obviously the refs are having issues right now, but I feel like a a massive reason we think that the refs are bad is because of this new era of the NBA where. Everything is posted on social media. You know, we were just talking about, you know, if a player fucks up, then it's on social media. Yeah. I feel like it's the same thing. A ref has a bad call, and then the the bad call is everywhere. And so we're only yeah. seeing – we're only – I feel like we're seeing more of these bad calls than, you know, good calls, obviously. And so yeah. the refs obviously do have a problem right now. The refs are really soft. But I feel like – and, again, this could be a very hot take – the ref problem is bad, but it's not as bad as it seems because we're seeing so much bad calls pushed to our front page, if that makes sense. But the ref issue is definitely an issue. I'm not saying it isn't an issue, but I'm saying that social media plays a big role in that because, again, if a ref fucks up, everybody's talking about it. Well. Remember I was talking about overprotected players? Yeah. Oh, you know I was going to talk about this when it comes to rest. Um, actually, you know, this actually been a, um, 
long going thing with uh stars. See if they complain a lot, they will get their way in the game. Cause you know the league, they don't want that, and um, seen that. We're, we're seeing this. Uh, remember that that uh back in the um past we had that talk, like that debate with uh not a debate, but we, we was in agreement of uh shooting into people, and um yeah. He, the rest, they are not consistent with that rule. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm picking up the cough on the mic. Um. Yeah, like, you. Uh, was it about DeJounte Murray? Or what? It was about Ja and DeJounte, right? The oh, other day. It was ja. Yeah, I posted about it. I was like, literally runs into his defender, right? It was already in the air. Yet he's still getting the foul, the shooting foul call, and I'm like, I remember back then too. Um, Chris Middleton it was a clutch game, like it was a clutch moment. Mm-hmm. Pump fakes. This is the three point line, by the way. I think it was three point line or it was a mid range. I, I just can't remember the play. Pump fakes or whatever. Guy jumps, and he shoots into him, and he still gets the foul call, and I'm like. Isn't that the rule that we just changed? Like what? You know? Yeah, I I agree with that one hundred percent. What I what I'm pissed off about is not necessarily the foul calls, but the bullshit texts and ejections. Yeah. Like we can go about that like all day. Like Cade getting ejected for the point, um, Kyle Lowry getting ejected for fucking passing the ball, and then what was the one with like Boogie the other day? Like Boogie. Oh no, nah, I think he was just. Uh... Boogie was just being Boogie, and then he got ejected. <laughs> he didn't really even do that much. Like, I feel like, especially, this is why ratings is down. Um, they're trying to confine players like how David Stern was doing. Well, I mean, not David, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, trying to keep itself professional. They're trying to keep itself professional, and it's just... It's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not helping the league. I say that they should just, like, let them do what they want to do. Like, it's not, it's so harmless when somebody's, like, you know, showboating, you know? Like, that's a part of sport, uh, sportsmanship, really? If you showboating, that means you're just on yeah. fire. Pretty sure if you're on fire, you just, you're not, you don't want to be serious, you know? You want to be, like, Gonna have fun. Uh, Curry, he does that every time he's on fire. You can see him humping the air. You know, especially after an N1, he'd be like, you know, he'd go crazy in the air or whatever. He don't get attacked, but Cade, he can, I think he he blocked somebody or he, he just scored on somebody and he point, right? Say it one more time. Sorry, I'm scrolling through fucking Bleacher Report because I want to fucking yeah, prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was stuff. There was stuff about fucking the Warriors losing, but I won't count that because we're talking about Curry specifically. But that's what we talking about. I was saying, but it was still all over social media. Maybe not Bleacher Report and House Highlights, but yeah, I'm saying like big social media outlets. They was not covering this. Yeah, I was saying if you. Hey, if he was, uh, let's say, I wouldn't say Kenny. I'll say, if you are a Twitter page, right? Like a yeah. uh, Lake Show or something? Or Bulls not Got Next or something? Yeah, you're definitely tweeted about Curry. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But really, people don't look into them for their uh, social, you know what I'm saying? For their uh, basketball stats and stuff. You know, yeah. uh, they actually uh, they go in there to hate on them. There's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, haters, they can point out everything. But these big social medias, they don't, they don't point it out. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Oh, you gave up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'll bring this up. I don't have anything to say about it. 
because uh, I don't know anything really about the people that were involved in it, so I'll just let you talk about it. Uh, the Brent Forbes trade. Um, what oh. do you think about it? I don't. I looked at the people that were involved, and I don't have an opinion because I, I have no idea who the people we just traded for are. To be completely okay. honest. So, Obol and PJ. Do First off, PJ Dozer. I think he just had like an ACL tear or something. He's not gonna be that. Um, how I'll say like good for the Celtics as much as people are making it. But you know they're excited about Bobo. You got Juancho Herman Gomez, and I'm being honest with you, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm so not happy. Yeah. Um, Seeing Bryn in another jersey, bro, it's gonna hurt. It already hurt. Like I liked him being a Buck because I was already a Bucks fan. But seeing him put on a fucking Nuggets jersey, really? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I'll say it right. I'll say it with Brent Ford, right? It was dumb trading him. Yeah. We need that three-point shot. Even though his defense is so bad. Like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, you can't even guard a piece of uh, sleep in front of you, you know? Yeah. Um, But I'll say, yeah, that's, that's just a bad trade. We... We literally got negative. I mean, except for like cash, money wise, unless we move that. If we don't move anybody during this trade deadline, that's the dumbest trade we ever done. Yeah, I <laughs> I agree with you. We needed a three point shooter. I will say though that with Bren out, that gives Primo more of an opportunity because Primo is a really good three point shooter. Man, he don't even get the minutes. Yeah. I wish Primo got more minutes, which is a whole other debate that we've literally had on every single fucking episode. <laughs> but, um, yeah, dude, I didn't like the trade. I didn't like it ethically is my issue. Like, not even, like, about what we got back. It's just the fact that Bren won a championship. He could have stayed with that championship team, but he's like, no, I'm going to go to where I feel my home is, San Antonio. I want to play. I want to be a spur again, and then we we're just like, uh, Bryn, we're gonna have to use you as a, as a trade piece in this three way, uh, three way talk right now. So it's like, fucking, he came home to show his loyalty to San Antonio, and we we just said, nah, yeah. you're you're gone again. You know what Only I mean? Only person with championship. Ex you know that. You know that's so funny. I've been scapegoating that for our Spurs. Team. Yeah. Well, you're the one that even you're the one that even brought that up last time you were on. So don't be talking about championship experience, because literally last time we brought up Bryn, uh, winning the championship, you said, and I quote, "You know he didn't get no minutes on that championship team." That's exactly what you said about Bryn last time. So don't be changing it up now talking about his championship experience. We was talking before the season, okay? <laughs> this season changed my mind about him okay yeah and I, that's because the poor play of Derek white most of the time lonnie walker i'm so surprised he's so trash bro like i don't want to give up on him but lonnie walker he's just just not that guy i, I think i made a post on him about instagram he's just not that guy you know <laughs> you're not that guy pal you're not that guy <laughs> Um, yeah, dude. Uh, so that brings me into the next thing, though, because uh, we were t just talking about Thad Young. Trade deadline's coming up. Who do you think will get traded, should be traded, um, et cetera? You know, what what moves should what teams make? Uh, I want to get rid of Thad Young. So fucking bad, bro. So fucking bad. Get him the fuck bad. out. I just, I don't want him because he's a fucking vet and he complains about the Spurs. He fucking whines about being a vet on the Spurs. Fucking yeah, get rid of him. him. Look, because they that's, because he's a vet. Uh, yeah, the I mean, Spurs right now are looking for young players f to complete their rebuild. We need to fucking just get rid of Thad Young for some fucking first round picks so we can get some more young players and then we're going to fucking build around Joshua goddamn Primo. Fucking Joshua pushing Primo. Um, did you see that post on my Instagram uh, this afternoon? 
a fucking di I posted Joshua Primo with a fucking blue P. F fucking dude. We need to get more young players, build around Primo, and yeah, we're doing we're pulling we're doing what Houston's trying to do, which is get young players. Except we have no fucking picks like Houston does. Houston won the draft last year. We need to start doing shit like that. So fucking get rid of that. You know, get you know, yeah, get rid of this one guy we just got from Bryn. Just get draft picks. I don't give a fuck about getting players back for Bryn. Like if we traded Bryn. For like fucking however many first rounds, I'd be okay with it. Because we need picks. Oh, look. About that, right? And the thing is with winning, people really don't understand this. Yeah, you need vets. And um, there hasn't been a team, except for, I would say, the OKC Thunder. Well, no, the OKC Thunder, they had like Nick Collison, but... You need vets, you know what I'm saying? You just can't go all, all super young. Um, but that's... Say, oh. uh, go ahead, finish what you were saying. Oh, but like I was saying, like, the super young, go all young and you're going to be like a super team or whatever, that doesn't work out as much as people say it really do. You seen this with the Kings. Oh, we're getting the into Kings. Kings. Yeah, you can't say the Kings didn't do the same exact thing. You went super young, and they haven't won or have, haven't have been that good significantly. Like, you need vets, you know what I'm saying? Like, as much as people hate vets, you need mentors for your young guys, you know? Yeah, but that's the whole argument that I brought up in the Primo video whenever Primo was first drafted. I said it's an argument that in the Spurs community of now versus future. And I feel like picking up Primo, we were s setting ourselves up for looking at the future versus win now. Yeah. And I feel like we need to continue that, complete the yeah. rebuild, just fucking get picks, get our young guys, develop our young guys like we're developing, developing Primo right now. Yeah. And then focus not on fucking 2021 to 2022 season, but like the 2025 to 2026 season, Whoa. you know Whoa. what I mean. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Like f fucking Primo is like third year in the league, you know whatever. Like plan for that, not right now. Oh, okay. Uh, so about that, right? Like, oh, that's just all right. Look, you just don't know if they're gonna be that guy though. Are you telling me you're doubting Primo? Come on, you can't be a Spurs fan and be doubting Primo. It's just, it's just a, 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 a lie that us NBA fans, they be, we go down, right? And we be like, this guy could be a star if he just develop him. No, not every guy can be a star. Not every guy can be developed into a good player. It's just how the player is. And I'm not calling Primo trash or anything. I'm just saying, you just can't be... You can't be betting on your future and just be like, okay, we're just going to develop. No, 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 no. I, I like... The Take the better chance. I like seeing Primo, though. I I think Primo has the stats. I've been watching Primo, bro, and I made that whole video on him. I really, I really do have faith in Primo. I feel like yeah. we can build around him. We were just talking about people looking up to Kobe earlier. Primo says he looks up to both Reggie Miller and Kobe. Um, yeah. I I definitely be one of those two. That's the funny part. What say that one more time? So his game could definitely be like one of those two, like one of those two guys. That's you know what, what I'm saying? saying, bro. I feel like I I really feel like we could build around Primo again. We have to see what happens, but I I really want to see. I really want to buy a Primo jersey, but they're fucking sold out everywhere. I I really wanna I really wanna see a new Spurs big three. With Primo, Kellen, and either a power forward or a center. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's basically what I wanted to say with the Primo conundrum. All right. Well, we can still talk about trade deadlines, though. We kind of oh, we um, branched that we branched that off in the in the Spurs and Primo talk because I say get rid of Thad Young. 
But uh, who else do you think either is going to leave or should leave? Yeah. Can you hear that? Hear what? I don't hear anything. You're good. Discord's not picking it up, so. All right, good. Cause there's, you know, <laughs> no yeah. in the background. Oh. Yeah, when you were in the Discord call earlier, it sounded like fucking pots and pans everywhere. But now you're good, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but I was saying right. Uh. What what I was saying? Uh. I already know Ben Simmons. He's not getting traded. Are you sure you don't hear that? I, I might have to. I, 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 or I might just have to have a, like a little intermission. Like, I I don't hear anything. I you're good, bro. I ain't picking it up. All right. Well, I was saying. Um, uh, ben Simmons, he's not getting traded. I don't think they should trade Dame. You told me to put. You told me to put on the list Blazers and Dame, and then you just say, yeah, nah, I, "I don't think anything's they, happening with Dame." I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they should trade Dame yet, because he's already injured. Um, okay, I'll put it this way: I don't think the I don't think the Blazers should get rid of Dame. I think Dame should get rid of the Blazers. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no! If anything, because Dame, he's gonna. He's gonna stay. You know what I'm saying? He's one of those. He people. is gonna stay. I'm saying he shouldn't. That you know, we were talking about that during free agency, like uh, during off season. Like Dame's gonna, not gonna win a single chip on that fucking Blazers team. Yeah, of course. They, he he doesn't care of you know winning. You know, I, even though that's his goal, he don't he don't care. You know what I'm saying? If he don't win, he like he said it himself. Like he he's all right if he don't win. You know. All right. All right, give me, give me like five, five seconds. Or like yeah, you're good. Minutes. Here, I'll mute you in the Discord and then just wave your hands when you're back. Uh huh. I said I'll mute you in the Discord and then just wave your hands when you're back and I'll, I'll talk while you're gone. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, next up on here, uh, we're we're gonna talk about the trade deadline uh, a little bit more when CJ's back. Uh, he's gonna go see what the noise is in the background, but um, I don't think the I don't think Ben the 76ers will get rid of Ben Simmons because previously they were talking about how um, you know the Kings have stopped talks with the 76ers and the 76ers are just asking way too much for Ben Simmons. Um, all and I can go on for that for for forever. The 76ers are just acting really stupid not trading Ben Simmons, and that's that's just obvious. That's a talk that's probably been said everywhere in the NBA media. Um, Kyrie, um, Kyrie, nothing's going to happen with Kyrie because they made that deal with the Nets for him to uh, play a bit, little bit more. Um, uh, John Wall, I, I could... I could see possibly John Wall getting flipped for some picks again for Houston because Houston's sort of doing this rebuild right now, and they're trying to build around uh, Jalen Green and uh, you know get their get their picks, get their young guys. And uh, John Wall, you know he he's been told by he's been told by Houston that he's not going to play, and so John Wall doesn't want to play. And then uh, Christian Wood possibly. I don't know Christian Wood's contract, so I don't know if he's available for trade right now. But Christian Wood, you know, has been complaining about the Houston organization because, again, they're playing, they're trying to build around Jalen Green, and so Christian Wood's uh, role has sort of diminished. Um, what are some other ones? Uh, we talked about Thad Young already. Um, Sarik and Sabonis have both been in trade deals. I personally, if I was the Suns and the Nuggets, um, or not the Suns and the Nuggets, sorry, the Suns and the Pacers, I would keep um, Sarik and Sabonis, but I don't know what they, the Suns and the Pacers have planned uh, is the problem. A lot of people don't um, really know like what the Suns and the Pacers are trying to get out of it in the future, so it's hard to determine if it's going to be like a good trade for them and if it's worth it when we don't know what exactly they're, they're planning for. But um, 
when uh, CJ comes back, we're going to talk about slept on contenders, um, and then a little bit of the all star stuff, and some surprises from either rookies this year or teams. Um, you're back. Okay, cool. All right. So, what do you want to? Uh, I was gonna say, let me. I'm gonna just cut it off early right now because then it's just not gonna stop. So. Okay. Um. Well, we're we're already at an hour, so uh, yeah. may, maybe here in the future, um, we can bring up uh what I still have on the list. The only things I really still have on the list are slept on contenders and and all star stuff. So unless you want to hit all star stuff real quick because it like it just was announced yesterday. And then yeah. that's really it. We can talk about like contenders and stuff on like a future episode. And that's yeah. All right, well, thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, go check out um, CJ Hoop Talks again. All his stuff is in the description. And if you're watching on audio, um, all his uh, socials, his Instagram, and his YouTube are just CJ Hoop Talks. And that's CJ spelled out by the way. So it's C E E J. A Y and then hoop talks. Um, yep. but, uh, I will go ahead and, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the all-star stuff solo, but I will see you uh, see you soon, CJ. I appreciate you coming on, man. Always, always a good no guest. Problem. Always know what you're talking about. So, uh, peace right. out, man. All right. Later, bro. Later. Let's <laughs> see what it lagged out for a second. I didn't see you fist pump the camera until like five seconds later. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. But All later, right. man. All right. Now, hang on. Yeah. Y'all can see this channel. This is where uh, all my vid. Uh, I have a bot that posts all of the videos in the Discord. So let me. S all right. So now it's just me. Um. So, yeah. All star stuff. Uh, I have a hot take on this. I feel like Wiggins deserves to be an all-star. Uh, doesn't deserve to be an all-star starter. But definitely with what he's been doing with the Warriors, with especially with Curry's shooting being diminished, uh, definitely deserves it. Um, with the all-star stuff, I will have to see where Luka ended up because I really did want to see Luka. Uh, be an all-star especially with John Morant now having his um, all-star appearance uh, I really like seeing these these younger all-stars come in you know Trey Young um, uh, and John Morant and Luca and some other ones um, trying to gather my thoughts here and think of what I want to say um, KD, uh, I'm interested to see who is going to step in for KD because KD is the captain, but KD's injured right now. And other than that, I actually don't have that much for All Stars. Now that I think about it, I do feel like uh, with with more of the Wiggins talk, I'm gonna have a whole video on that, so I won't talk too much about Wiggins. Um, but yeah, I got I got a lot more videos coming out. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, lots of really good topics, like the LeBron thing I talked about earlier that I know it's a, it's a hot take. Going to talk about the Cavs, talk about LaMelo, uh, a lot of stuff lined up. So I will see y'all uh, in the next one, and just be on the lookout for some videos. And uh, update on the clips, by the way. The clips, uh, I'm going to have them come out one a day now rather than all at once because what I previously used to do is I'd upload the episode and then after I upload the episode all of the clips would come out a day after but the problem with that is that if I have the episode come out and then like 12 clips come out the day after then the clips sort of push the podcast episode down and so the episode doesn't get you know as much attention because there's all these clips that are in the way and then it also doesn't let the the clips really get as many views uh, as I hope they would as well because then all the clips are sort of competing with each other for views. But if I upload the clips once a day, that allows the podcast to sort of blossom views and then each of the clips to uh, gain, um, gives each of the clips time to gain views on their own as well rather than it being 
20 clips that are each getting only three views. Um, but anyway, that's really all I got for this episode. Another great talk with CJ Hoop Talks. So love having him on. Go check him out again. And as well, like I said in the beginning of the episode, uh, these episodes are available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, wherever you get your podcast. Um, so go go check it out, Nathan Budnett. And then obviously all the socials, um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, all that good stuff. Either Nathan Butnet or Gingy. If you look it up, you will see it. And also, I do some uh, gaming stuff and record the Nathan Butnets live on Twitch. So go check that out. And I will see you all in the next one after all that. I know I've already said that probably three times, but it is what it is. Nathan Butnet, episode 20.